Good local time, everyone. I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister. I'm really happy to be here to share with you the vision of the Ministry of Digital Affairs, or MODA, established in last August to promote digital resilience for all. In Taiwan, we make sure that no one is left behind in digital transformation. Everyone needs the ability to harness the power of digital tools to connect citizens and technology, industry and safety. And the capacity of resilience, swiftly rebounding from adverse impacts to adapt, to improve and to learn from challenges while reinforcing our strengths is critical. Digital resilience for all encompasses three dimensions. Emergency, industrial and societal resilience. Emergency resilience enables us to effectively address various crises, including natural disasters and cyber attacks. The manner in which Taiwan confronted the COVID-19 pandemic epitomizes our resilience in action. According to the Civicus Monitor, Taiwan remains the most open society in Asia, boasting freedom of speech, assembly and expression, comparable to any other liberal democracy. By embracing novel ideas from diverse sectors, our citizens directly engage in open discourse in public forums and with the government, allowing us to promptly implement health management protocols with good enough consensus to foster trust among all stakeholders. Follow the SARS outbreak in 2004, Taiwan has established an unwavering commitment to pandemic management in the form of Central Epidemic Command Center, or CECC. The nerve center for seamless communication among central, regional, and local authorities ensured readiness for impending crisis. In late 2019, when a CDC official detected a potential cluster infection of atypical pneumonia, the government rapidly responded to this news from Wuhan by mandating health inspections for all incoming passengers and activating the Central Epidemic Command Center in January 2020. So in the few years that followed, our approach to the pandemic has been grounded in transparency and inclusivity, exemplified by initiatives such as the Mask Map, the visualization was collaboratively designed by government and civic tech community, with over 130 tools developed to enable equitable access to real-time pharmacy stock status. Now, Taiwan also partnered with convenience stores to offer masks around the clock, fostering a people-centric strategy that assuaged fears and protected the public. Such endeavors are built upon the persistent and relentless efforts of transparency. Our open data portal, data.gov.tw, has released more than 57,000 data sets over the past decade, including high-value data on air quality, real estate transactions, agricultural products, and electricity supply and demand. And this has enabled numerous successful data activation applications. The public can directly engage in co-creation through venues such as the Presidential Hackathon. For five consecutive years, the Presidential Hackathon welcomed thousands of social entrepreneurs, civil servants, and teams from dozens of countries, with each edition seeing five outstanding teams selected and awarded by the President herself upon conclusion of the event, promising the budget, regulatory, and personnel support for their ideas. The 2021 champion, Aging Well, aimed to accelerate the lengthy long-term care service process, which can take up to 180 days from planning to delivery. The Ministry of Health and Welfare, along with the Jiayi City Government and the D4SG Data Hero Project, proposed analyzing long-term care service data to build a care plan recommendation machine learning model. By studying cases in Jiayi City, they developed 58 models with an average accuracy of 80%. The 2018 champion One Stop Emergency and Disaster Response was a joint proposal from the Ministry of Health and Welfare, 
the National Fire Agency, the National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Reduction, and the practitioners. The proposal aimed to address the challenge for delivering timely emergency care during disasters when large numbers of patients suffering major trauma need immediate transportation to hospitals. Communication gaps between accident sites, hospitals, and emergency response centers can delay rescue efforts. There are nine fire agencies in cities like Taipei, New Taipei, and Kaohsiung who have all built their emergency medical information systems, but they could not integrate them due to inconsistent data formats. One-stop emergency and disaster response established a standardized information streaming platform connecting pre-hospital and hospital emergency medical data. Medical staff can quickly log patient conditions on a tablet, seeing available emergency beds, and notify the hospital. Emergency rooms can prepare in advance and remotely monitor patients, while government agencies access information directly to help allocate beds. Now, Taiwan's experience shows that any country can adopt this approach, making government decision-making transparent and use co-creative tools so that scattered public opinion become an ongoing cycle of public-private partnerships. Meanwhile, the pandemic forced us to rethink how we work and interact. We saw a shift toward a more flexible work, with many choosing to work in a hybrid way to save time and also to be more productive. So with such a hybrid work culture, open innovation plays an important role in fostering cross-organization collaboration and knowledge growth. By promoting co-creation and sharing, we enable individuals and organizations to contribute to access resources, regardless of technical abilities. Now, recognizing this, the MODA releases more materials into public domain, allowing sharing digital commons with partners worldwide. We encourage government agencies to post system source code onto GitLab, GitHub, and so on, for use by other agencies and the public, and will continue promoting this to maximize benefits from publicly available information, data, and code. Now, to encourage the public to use online services conveniently and safely, we also adopted a mobile identification and signing mechanism. Taiwan has a comprehensive household registration system where citizens register and update household data from birth to death. This complete household data forms the basis for the Citizen Digital Certificate in 2003. Now, the Citizen Digital Certificate is a physical chip card serving as a digital identity verification tool for Taiwanese citizens with the legal effect of an electronic signature. Governmental agencies often use Citizen's Digital Certificate to verify citizen identity for online government transactions. Now, in 2020, the mobile Citizen Digital Certificate, the TW FIDO application, developed from the Citizen Digital Certificate when online. Citizens can download the mobile app on their mobile devices, linking their Citizen Digital Certificate, and immediately start accessing various governmental services without a plastic card or password through on-device biometric identification. We believe this mobile certificate will encourage more people using online services and applications, again, in a hybrid way. Another part of resilience is cybersecurity. The MODA sets a national cybersecurity joint defense system connecting the government and critical infrastructures. It boasts real-time warning mechanisms and sharing threat indicators while connecting cross-sectoral resources and fostering collaboration. Now, we're consolidating public and private cybersecurity capabilities. We're implementing zero-trust principles and conducting exercises to ensure critical infrastructure seamless operation during emergencies. As for protecting personal information, well, now all governmental agencies dealing with large-scale nationwide personal data will have to implement a zero-trust architecture with triple authentication on the exclusive t road channel for encrypted data transmissions over the next couple years. Now, the T-Road transmission is not just fully encrypted with governmental certificates, 
but it's also isolated from external service networks, and it ensures data transmission security, similar to X-Road. Adopting a zero-trust architecture on the management systems, we adhere to this never-trust, always-verify mindset. So each connection is verified for identity, equipment, and behavior, thereby strengthening endpoint protection and preventing malicious actors from eavesdropping or stealing data in transit. And moreover, to counter cyber attacks, the mode that uses this decentralized architecture or Web3 that is immune to denial of service. We use the Interplanetary File System or IPFS backend and we're bound to this global blockchain community. This decentralized asymmetric defense architecture ensures anyone can donate resources to pin us, to keep us uh, afloat. Unlike traditional methods of mutual consumption and traffic cleaning and so on, this allows for even more decentralized backups. As for industrial resilience, we're committed to enabling digital transformation across all sectors while fostering a robust ecosystem. For micro and small medium enterprises, the T-Cloud Marketplace is the first nationwide e-commerce platform for governmental subsidies. The T-Cloud offers a fully online process for application and receive subsidies for the use of cloud services, streamlining the traditional manual application processes. With 24-7 availability, the platform enhances administrative efficiency. It simplifies the application process by conducting it online. The platform is gradually integrating other identity verification systems, extending to services for micro-businesses, co-ops, and the T-Cloud Marketplace improves operation efficiency by implementing this fully online reimbursement mechanism, enabling solution providers to receive payments in just under one week. Societal resilience focuses on empowering our civil society by connecting to the democracy network. In 2022, I signed the Declaration for the Future of the Internet with representatives of 60 countries, formally expanding this people-first public-private partnership as a shared value for democratic allies. And in the declaration, countries with similar ideas jointly pledge to promote the openness, the interoperability of the digital economy in a pluralistic and inclusive way, and to make a multi-stakeholder governance approach to build the internet into a resilient structure, strengthening mutual trust and protections of freedom and human rights. Now, sharing medical knowledge for the benefit of all and the advancement of healthcare, of course, is a fundamental principle in the physician's pledge. Similarly, we pledge to have plurality to represent our extension of our pluralistic society to the online world. And only when we can cooperate across diversity, when individuals from all backgrounds can have an opportunity to create unique interoperable spaces, we can remove the constraints of physical location and time, allowing for multiple choices and solutions to coexist in harmony. In the vision of plurality.net, Taiwan welcomes collaboration with all countries, all partners, as all medical professionals who share our values. By working together, we can leverage our collective knowledge and expertise to improve patient outcomes and advance healthy um, adults and children and elderly globally. Through open communication and cooperation, we can break down barriers and create a more inclusive and equitable healthcare system that benefits everyone. We believe by embracing plurality, we will build a brighter future for all. Now, I would like to end this talk with a poem, uh, my job description as a brief summary and blessing to all of us. When we see the Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And whenever we hear the singularity is near, let's always remember the plurality is here. Friends, thank you for listening. I wish you the most enlightening and successful experience. And live long and prosper.